What's going on? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to draw shapes and images in Pygame that are transparent and translucent or semi-transparent. We are going to do it in a couple of different ways, and I'm going to talk through all of the options with you. All right, so first thing we do with every Pygame game is import Pygame. If you don't have it imported already, you'll need to run pip install Pygame um, and then pygame.init to just kind of get it set up in the beginning. And I will try to set up the basic game uh, as quickly as I can just as I talk through it. So we'll have a fixed 1000 pixel width. Feel free to make that smaller if you want. I'm guessing if you look this up, you already have a game window. But so the first thing that's a little different is that you're probably used to defining this screen, pygame.init dot display dot set mode and then in square brackets doing your width and your height um, and this is correct you have to define the overall game window which is known as your screen in Pygame but something separate if you want to use Pygame's native drawing tools you want to make a surface that is essentially going to sit on top of your screen that accepts transparency as an argument so the screen and this kind of makes sense like the overall game window that Pygame gives you can't be somewhat transparent because it's sitting over top of your base computer. So when you boot up a Pygame window, the actual screen has to be essentially 100% opaque at all times. So we're going to set up a surface using surface equals Pygame dot capital S surface. And all we have to do on this is we give it the width and the height, the same size arguments, um, width and height. And actually you can set up a surface to be any size, but I'm going to create a layer on top of the screen that will accept transparency as an argument. So to do that, I just give it width and then height and then one more argument, which is pygame dot and then src alpha, source alpha. Um, and that's just telling it that, hey, normally you're just looking for RGB for color keys. Now you're looking for RGBA, so alpha, um, which is how transparent something is, okay? And so for now, let's just do the bare minimum to get the game uh, running so you can see how we use that surface. So uh, let's set up FPS is 60. Timer is going to be equal to pygame.time.clock. And then um, that should be all we need initially. So let's make this variable run, set it equal to true, and say while run. Uh, and now let's go ahead and anytime you set up a while loop, you just want to make sure you have a way to get out of that. So first thing, we'll timer.tick at our frame rate, and then we'll screen.fill just black, okay? So the screen, spy, the screen default background will be black. That should make things easy to see. And now let's go ahead and uh, do two things. Let's do screen.blit, and uh, what we're going to blit onto the screen is our surface that we defined, and we're going to put it at position 00. zero. So this is us drawing a shape that is the exact same size as the screen onto the screen and it's gonna fill the entire screen. But now that's our surface. So when we want to draw objects that we change the transparency of, we draw them onto the surface instead of onto the screen and then the entire surface gets drawn onto the screen. It might seem a little twisted and goofy, um, but I'm gonna create this function draw screen and I could call it draw surface but we're going to fill that in once we're done setting up our game loop so we're going to have this function draw screen and in here we'll actually put all of the things that we want to draw onto the screen and that's kind of where we'll define uh, transparency and how to use it okay but we have this while loop we have to put a little event handling in here so that we can get out of it so we'll say for event in pygame dot event dot get I am having some trouble typing event dot get um, and then we are going to say if the event dot type is equal to this unique one pygame dot quit then we want to set run equal to false and we want to exit pygame so uh, while we're still in the while loop and every loop with pygame dot display dot flip which draws everything onto the screen and then if we are outside of the while loop just pygame dot quit like that okay so if i run this uh you should if it's working you should just get oh i might have a window running already um yeah you just get a black screen uh we haven't drawn anything onto the screen yet um, but it's working okay so we verified this is error free setup code okay so let's go into draw screen and make our first object okay and so the first thing i want to do is pygame.draw 
dot rect. Let's just take a look at the most basic shape. And now what you'll notice um, is the first thing it's asking for is what surface to draw it onto. And our surface is actually called surface. So if you've done a lot of the tutorials on this channel, you know a lot of the time screen goes there because we just made a rectangle, we want to draw it on the screen. Well, uh, in this case, we want it to be somewhat transparent. So we draw it onto the surface, which accepts alpha as an argument. Now let's say we want it to be red. So that's R, G, and B. So G and B of zero, but now there's a fourth argument. And here I'm gonna put 120. So it's another argument that goes from zero to 255. It's another um, essentially 256 bit uh, or 256 value integer um, for alpha. And I'll just say 120. So it should look about 50% transparent, okay? And let's put it at position 100, 100. Just make it 200 tall and uh, or 200 wide and 100 tall so nothing fancy there all right and now we have pygame.draw.rect and that is all i'm going to do for now and let's boot this up okay and hopefully what you can see here is it's a dark red even though we didn't give it any uh, g or b to make it anything other than bright red all right so let's take a look at what happens if i change that to 255 Okay, it is that normal, vibrant, bright red. Now let's take a look at what happens if you don't put anything in the alpha. Okay, it defaults to an alpha of 100% visible. So you don't even have to worry about like, well, I don't wanna mess with transparency for everything because most of the objects I want just full color all the time. But look, like at 50, which is about 20% transparent, it's almost invisible, okay? So this is really cool. Now let's take a look at how to maybe uh, vary it because it's also not something fixed. So let's say you wanna make transparency uh, something that varies and we'll just start it out at 120 when we boot up our game Okay, but uh, let's say we actually want to be able to change it in game Maybe you have like a load in sequence or something where your object or your player starts the game by fading in really quick Okay, um, well you could do that with like a for loop and say like until it's fully visible then uh, add one to it But let's say that we actually want to manually change it So let's add some more uh, event handling and say if event dot type is equal to pygame dot and we'll say key down um, and then we'll add a section for key up. So basically we want to be able to make it more or less transparent um, by using the up and down keys, okay? So we'll say key down and then key up and then we need some sections in here to check if the key was the up key or the down key. So pygame dot k underscore up. And then uh, if someone presses the up key, we'll say change should be positive and we'll copy this whole thing and we'll say if somebody presses the down key, then the change should be negative. Copy this whole thing and say if you release the up key or the down key, and by the way, we're gonna get to images right after this. So I know um, this is sort of to showcase that it's uh, able to change in the middle of a routine. Images are slightly different, so bear with me. Um, and then we'll say at the end of this loop, transparency plus equals change, okay? But then we need to put a little loop in here to check for fringe cases. So we'll say if transparency ever gets greater than 255, then just set it equal to zero. And we'll say uh, if transparency is ever less than zero, then set it equal to 255. So this way, if you're just holding down uh, up or down and you just want to um, see how low the transparency can get and then flip it back to the top, you can do that, okay? So hopefully, I did that kind of quick, but hopefully this is all we need to do to actually make that rectangle change with the arrow keys. So let's take a look. Oh, I do have an error. Change is not defined. So change <laughs> up in the beginning is equal to zero. Let's run it. Okay, so if I hold down the down arrow key, hopefully, Nothing happens. Okay, so I think this is a simple indentation error. I think all this transparency plus equals change stuff, I accidentally put it under for event in Pygame, and so it's in the event handling. So it was changing, it was only changing one uh, per loop. And so now if we put it out here, yeah, you can see, okay, I'm holding the up arrow and it's getting progressively less transparent. If I keep holding the up arrow, it goes completely transparent. Down lets me change it the other way. Okay, so we just have this really useful tool now that we can manually manipulate the transparency uh, within our function as we go. So let's do images as well. This is how we can pretty easily use Pygame's native drawing tools to draw shapes. Um, but what if we have an image, okay? So let's say we have 
some super cool image of a logo that we really like. And uh, let's do pygame.transform. I'm just gonna load in the image and I'm going to scale it down. So pygame.transform.scale of pygame.image.load. And then mine is called the LT logo. We'll see what it looks like in just a second. Um, but when you load in the image, that's all you have to do. And then when you scale it, you just give it an X and Y dimension to scale it down to. Mine will be 300, 300. And then I'm also gonna find, define a font real quick, pygame.font.font, um, free sans bold.ttf, and then size 32. I'm not gonna get too into that stuff. That's not um, what we are here to talk about today. So, all right, let's go back into draw screen and let's go ahead and define um, something other than the rectangle now. Let's go ahead and say that we want to surface dot blit um, our logo, okay? And we want to put it at 500, 200. So X, just move it to the right a little bit and down a little bit. So it's, a, it's in its own place. Um, and then uh, why don't we go ahead and just screen dot blit some text that tells us how tra uh, how transparent our stuff is. So we'll do font dot render and let's make an F string and say this is our transparency. Um, and now I'm going to use a little math and I know that can be confusing, but let's say that we just want to show it as a percentage. Okay, so that number zero to two five five, the way to convert that to a percent invisible is basically do one minus and then our transparency divided by 255 um, and then times just 100. So that'll give us a value that looks like a percentage. All right. And that's it for inside the curly brackets. And then the percentage um, uh, icon, just so we know it's in a percent. And then to uh, give it an anti-alias argument of true. And we'll say we want our text to be white. Um, and we're not going to mess around with tr the actual transparency of the text. And we'll put this all the way over at the right in the top of the screen. So this line was just so that there's a reading um, on the screen of how transparent the things we're looking at are. Okay, but so I have this surface dot blit of the logo and what's interesting is you'll see even though the surface accepts alpha um, arguments, let's go ahead and boot this up and you'll see I, I now I can see the transparency of the rectangle and that's changing, but this super cool logo icon um, is not changing at all and that is because we have to use another argument when you load in an image It's actually a surface on its own So you have to do this logo dot set alpha and give it an alpha argument But there's one more thing. This is still not quite all the way there when I boot this up You're gonna see it's still not changing and that's because we're drawing the image onto a surface but we're not setting the transparency of the entire surface so i wonder if we did surface dot set alpha instead would that work and then you can see yes that's one valid way of doing it but now we've lost the ability to uh, control just the rectangle now everything on the entire surface shares the alpha so the image is actually this is kind of interesting okay let's go back to logo dot set alpha the image is actually able to be drawn directly onto the screen because it is a surface in and of itself. So let's go ahead and say now it's still working and they both turn transparent at the same rate. But what's interesting is we don't have to have one transparency argument anymore. Actually, I'll get rid of that and I'll just say um, let's set the logo image to be a permanent alpha of 50 and then let's change the transparency on the rectangle. Okay, and you can see now we have the ability to control how visible or invisible any object and images independently. So the most important thing to remember there is if you want to draw rectangles, lines, circles, things like that in Pygame with some degree of invisibility, you need to um, draw them onto a surface that accepts an alpha argument. But if you're drawing images onto the screen, you can set their alphas independently or you can make a surface layer for your images, draw every image that you want transparent at the same time onto that surface and set the alpha collectively. So you have a lot of options. Pygame is really cool in the things that it offers to you once you sort of dig into it and you find the functionality that lies underneath the hood. I hope you found this useful. I hope this was the content that you were looking for when you clicked on the channel. Please don't forget to leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, it helps me out a ton. We will be doing a lot more Pygame content in 
in the coming weeks, assuming my child does not get here too early. So uh, hopefully there's not a downtime in content. I am planning content out uh, for the coming weeks to try to get a little bit ahead, but uh, I am expecting a child sometime in July. So if there's a little bit of a lull, uh, bear with me. But thank you guys so much for watching. We will see you next time. Don't forget to let me know in the comments below what you would like to see next on the channel. Until next time, thanks for watching. Bye.